This is Optimal Health Daily, episode 192. Five Ways to Instantly Appear More Confident, part two, by Steve Cam of nerdfitness.com. And I'm Dr. Neil. Welcome back to Optimal Health Daily, or welcome for the first time if you're new here. This is the podcast where I act as your very own personal narrator and read to you from some of the most popular health and fitness blogs online, including Nerd Fitness, Ben Greenfield Fitness, Steve Pavlina, and many more. Remember, if there are any authors that you read from but would like us to narrate for you, come by and let us know. You can get in touch with us at oldpodcast.com or on our new Facebook group. If you recall, today's post is a continuation from yesterday. So if you're new here or skipping around, you'll probably wanna stop and check out yesterday's episode first. That's episode 191. But for the rest of you, let's hear part two and continue optimizing your life. Five Ways to Instantly Appear More Confident, Part 2, by Steve Cam of nerdfitness.com. Tip 3, smile. People don't smile enough these days, so we're bringing it back. When dealing with any situation or scenario where you're uncomfortable, it's easy to get caught up in your head, which means you probably have a stupidly sad look on your face. Pretty soon, you'll develop the reputation of, quote, that creepy guy in the corner who smells like cheese. Now, if you don't smell like cheese, you're already halfway home. We'll just work on the other half. Smile. Not a fake smile, not a creepy smile, but a genuine smile. Don't know how to smile correctly? Stand in front of a mirror, close your eyes, and look down. Look up, smile, and open your eyes at the same time. See that smile right there? That's a genuine smile. Tip four, win the staring contest. Unless you work at home in your underwear and only interact with your cat, my day is way different than that, shut up, you probably have quite a few conversations with people on a daily basis. It could be your coworkers at the water cooler, the lady behind the counter at CVS, your waitress at lunch, or random strangers that you pass on the street. When was the last time you looked somebody in the eye until they looked away first? If you're like me, you've probably always been the first to flinch. I say no more. Starting right now, you're going to be the person that doesn't look away. Think of each interaction as a mini battle, your eyes against theirs. As long as you're smiling and blinking, you won't come across as creepy, unless, of course, you're actually a creep. If you've always been shy, the first few times doing this will be absolutely nerve-wracking. Power through it. Once you start to be the non-flincher consistently, you'll quickly learn that everybody else is nervous as too and will quickly look away given enough time. Tip five, get out of your head. After going through some physical changes, it's going to take time for you to adjust how you feel on the inside versus how you look on the outside. I sometimes still feel like the five foot, 100 pound high school sophomore with braces, even though I haven't looked like that for over a decade. I have friends who used to be fat guys who still feel huge, even though they have a single digit body fat percentage. It's time to stop living inside your head. If you feel out of place in a situation, everybody around you probably does too. We all have our own insecurities. It's those of us that can exist outside of our brains and project confidence that usually get what we're chasing. As a fellow nerd and chronic overthinker, I know this is tough to do. Stop thinking so much and just go for it. Once you spot somebody you're interested in, don't give yourself more than three seconds before approaching him or her. Anything beyond that will cause you to overanalyze the situation in your head and probably end up doing nothing. You'll quickly learn that if you don't ask, the answer is always no, so you have nothing to lose. Introduce yourself immediately to strangers at a party. Get the awkward out of the way immediately and you'll come across as cool and collected. Once you have your speech or presentation prepared, don't give yourself hours to get nervous. Concentrate on something else to occupy your mind until it's time to present. Don't overthink, just follow the plan and talk slowly. Ralph Waldo Emerson once said, quote, he who is not every day conquering some fear has not learned the secret of life, end quote. I bet those three things listed above seem scary to 95% of the population. They all scare the bejesus out of me, which is precisely why I forced myself to do them. Part of building confidence is taking risks and having the ability and the guts to do stuff that scares you. Your mission. As you follow these five steps, you'll start to appear more confident which will make some of your encounters more successful, which will instill more confidence in you, 
which will then make even more of your encounters successful, and so on. Think of your confidence like a giant snowball with lots of inertia. Tough to get started, but once it's rolling, the momentum will take over. Your homework for today. While walking down the street with your head held high, your shoulders back, and a big smile on your face, make direct eye contact with at least five strangers that walk by and give them a simple hi. Remember, they have to be the ones to look away first, not you. The first few times will feel really awkward, but who cares? You'll never see them again. As you get more missions under your belt, you can progress to other more challenging objectives, like striking up a conversation with a stranger or giving a speech, robbing a bank, etc. One last thing, with great power comes great responsibility. There is a fine line between having confidence and being cocky. Nobody likes the cocky guy who is full of himself, so cool it with the cheesy pickup lines or stories proclaiming your awesomeness and creepy seduction techniques. Fear and nervousness are easy to detect, but so is being transparently fake. Don't change what you are. Just learn to be more confident in who you are. You just listened to part two of the post titled Five Ways to Instantly Appear More Confident by Steve Camp of nerdfitness.com. What's great about this post is that it had over 250 comments on it. It was definitely a hit with his readers, so hopefully you found it helpful too. Even for me, rereading this post made me feel more confident again. And I've read this post before, but it's just so darn inspiring. And I love that last line. Don't change what you are, just learn to be more confident in who you are. We're not asking you to be a different person altogether. These feelings are already there in you. You probably want to feel more confident. We just need to pull it out of you. And while I was reading that portion on smiling to you all, I was actually smiling, but I was smiling for a different reason. When he was explaining how to close your eyes in front of a mirror, then look up, smile, it reminds me of me when I take photos. People say I have a nice smile, which of course I appreciate. Usually they just tell me I have small shoulders or a very thin neck. But for some reason, when I take photos, I can't smile properly. It always looks so funny. For those of you that are big fans of the show Friends like I am, you might remember Chandler has that same problem. And at one point, his girlfriend at the time, Monica, shouts at him, Chandler, what is the matter with your face? That is totally me when I take pictures. So I'm gonna use Steve's tip of standing in front of a mirror, closing my eyes, looking up and smiling, and hopefully I can master that so I don't look so weird in all my photos. Now don't forget, if you wanna suggest authors or get in contact with us for any reason, you can visit oldpodcast.com. But we also have a Facebook group where it's even easier to get in contact with us. The shortcut link is oldpodcast.com slash Facebook. Or you can search for Optimal Living Daily Podcasts and request to join from there. We also give away books in the Facebook group. So just a little more reason for you to join. Again, the shortcut link that'll take you straight to it is oldpodcast.com slash Facebook. All right, that's it for today. I hope you're having a great week so far. I'll see you on tomorrow's show where your optimal life awaits. Hello, Life Optimizer. This is Justin Mollick, creator and producer of this show and Optimal Living Daily, the brother podcast of this one. Literally, I'm Dr. Neil's brother. If you like the format of this show, you'll love Optimal Living Daily too, where I also read to you from blogs, but cover other topics like personal development, finance, and minimalism, from bloggers like Derek Sivers, The Minimalists, Zen Habits, and many more. So for more amazing content read to you for free, come subscribe to Optimal Living Daily too, and together we'll optimize your life. You've been listening to Optimal Health Daily. Be sure to hit the subscribe button to stay up to date on each new episode and head to oldpodcast.com That's oldpodcast.com for a free gift, as well as more actionable tips and resources to help you maximize your potential. Thanks for joining us, and remember, your optimal life awaits.